Hey everybody, welcome to another Collection DX video review. Today we're checking out the DX Rocket Henke Plezu On from Juden Sentai Kyo Ryuja. And so this is the Juden Ryu number 9 out of 10, which means we're almost done with the line. And so Plezu On is uh, part Plesiosaurus. Uh, you can mostly only tell in this mode by the fact that it's got that dinosaur face. But this is the rocket ship mode. So it's mostly rocket ship, just a little bit of Plesiosaurus. Uh, it's a very nice looking toy though, all the way around. A lot of nice detail on the toy. Very cool. It also has a lot more depth, and it's very nice and heavy. Just very cool to hold and just look at. Now on the underside, we have three little wheels. Two right there, and one right here and like the little handle landing gear part and so this is so that you can move the uh, toy around a bit on the back of the toy we have the uh, Juden Sentai Kyo Ryuja logo and we also have the tail of the mecha and it looks like it's also got like three little thrusters on the back I think that's what those are supposed to be now the cool thing is if you remove the tail you can actually stand this guy up and then you can display it as a rocket ship ready to launch. And so this is the rocket ship mode of the Mecha. It does have a couple other standalone modes. And um, the next mode, very simple to transform into. All you have to do is bring those panels down. And so this basically is the dinosaur mode. You can see the flippers of the Plesiosaurus right there. But it's really not much different from the vehicle or rocket ship mode, whatever you want to call it. So it's kind of neat that you can see some of the inside pieces of the mecha when you unfold it. But as I mentioned, not too much difference. So it's not going to win a whole bunch of points for originality. It's just unfolding those two side pieces. And um, even when you do so, it still looks like a ship. Now the next transformation is a little bit more complicated and uh, actually a lot more cool than the transformation between the rocket ship mode and the dinosaur mode. So we are going to transform this bad boy into the robot. And so let's get this going. Let's take this off. Take that piece off. That comes off. Those come off too. And that comes off. So as you can see there's going to be a bit of part swapping with this toy. Then we're going to fold open the main part of the body, split the legs apart, and then bring these guys down. And let's put some feet on those legs before we continue. And then we're going to put the left arm on this. There's actually two of these pieces, but we're only going to use one as an arm. The other one is going to go in the back. And I'll show you guys. Goes right there. And so that covers half of that square recess in the back. So I didn't like the fact that you can actually see the square opening in the back, or at least part of it, after you've transformed this. Uh, this is pretty much how it's going to stay. It would have been neat if they would have figured a way to cover that, you know, square area. Since we used that other half to make one of the arms, uh, it's not going to cover that hole. Now you can use this piece to make another arm for the mecha if you wanted to have two regular arms, but we're not going to do that. Instead, what we are going to do is we're going to attach that big neck and head piece of the dinosaur on the right arm. And first we have to pop that open. And we're almost done with this transformation. Next, we're going to put the head on this bad boy. Pop that open, and I forgot while we were in the back to put this little panel on there, but that's going to be the last part of this. And there you have it, the Plezu O. You have the right arm, which is a gun, and we'll talk a little bit about the electronics later. I'm going to go through all the different modes first, and then at the end we'll talk about the different sound effects. However, since we have formed the Plezuo, it's only fitting that we play the music for this transformation. So 
But before handling this toy, I actually wasn't a big fan of the Plezuo. It's made several appearances on the show already, since Kyoru Violet, the original partner of Plezuo, has shown up and he's given it to Kyoru Red. And so it's become one of those staple mechas in the arsenal of the Kyoruja when they're fighting the giant monster of the week. I wasn't a big fan of the kind of goofy rocket feet and the uh, logo on the chest, but after transforming it and playing around with it, I like it. Um, definitely has a lot going for it as a standalone toy. And you can also combine it with all the other arm mecha in the line because the attachment points on the shoulders are the exact same ones that are used on the other toys. It doesn't have a battery reader on the shoulder like Gabutira does, so it won't recognize what mecha it's combining with. There is the Plezuo Bumpaki, which is the first combination that appeared in the show, using one of the extra arm mechas to combine with the Plezuo. The one neat thing about attaching an extra arm mecha to the left side of the Plezuo is the fact that you can now use that other arm to attach to the back. And it looks much nicer not having that square recess in the back. And since we're looking at the back right now, it looks okay. Not as good as the front, obviously. The toy has a better facade than the back of it. Uh, there's a lot of screw holes and whatnot. Not the neatest looking, but all around, this is a pretty cool mecha. But this is not the only combination that the Plezuo can do. Obviously, I said it can combine with the other arm mecha, but it can also combine with Gabtira and the Boom Paki for a little special combination. First, let's get the Plezuo ready for the combination. We're going to take Boom Paki off and set him aside for now. We're going to take the big dinosaur head off the right arm. We're going to take the rockets off the bottom. We're going to take this off the back. So, once again, there's going to be quite a bit of part swapping involved, obviously, because we've taken pretty much everything off. And this is going to come off too. And the panel on the back, before I forget, has to come off also. Then we're going to bring the legs up and lock them into place right there. We're going to open up the leg panels and bring out these connection points. Close the leg panel. Same with the other side. And then we're pretty much ready to combine. And here we have Gaptira ready to combine with the Plezuon. Uh, basically, it's in dinosaur mode, except for the fact that the head of the robot is sticking out, and that's because this is going to serve as a connection point for the Plezuon. You may also notice that there's an extra piece on the waist of Gaptira, and this basically keeps the legs in place. It doesn't allow them to boom back, uh, so it stabilizes the mecha a little bit more. First, we're going to put the uh, little rockets on the bottom of Gaptira. There's one, and there's two. And next we're going to pop Plezuon on top of Gabutira, like so. Make sure that's secured well. And we're going to take these arm pieces, we're going to open up these little connection points on the inside, and we're going to attach them right here. And then these connect to the sides of Gabutira. And this helps stabilize the figure a bit more. Same thing with the other one. Pop open the connection point. Stick that in. And there you go. As for the uh, panel that was part of Plezuon, you just stick this in the little connection point on the shoulder of Gabtira. And once again, Boom Paki is going to serve as the left arm for this mecha. And then the big old dinosaur head is going to serve as the right arm for the mecha. And we open this up. And we are done. And so let's let the Plezuo tell us what the name of the combination is.
Now I know the announcer's voice was a little garbled when he announced what this mecha is called. It's the Bakuretsu Kyoryujin, though it sounds kind of like he's saying Bakumatsu Kyoryujin, if that even makes sense. But anyways, this is the Bakuretsu Kyoryujin, which I believe translates to the Explosive Kyoryujin. This is another mecha I was not a big fan of. It essentially is just Plezuon riding on top of Gabtira. I mean, let's look at the side. When you look at it, it's a dinosaur riding on top of another dinosaur, or a dinosaur transformed into a robot riding on top of another dinosaur. But I love the combination of this. Um, the engineering that went into transforming this robot between the dinosaur mode, the robot mode, the plezuo mode, and the uh, Bakuretsu Kyoryujin when it combines with the Gabtira and Bumpaki is very, very cool to see all the little pieces go into the combination in very different ways. I thought it was very cool, um, very well done. So I started to love this design because of how it fits in with the other toys in the line and how it transforms, you know, between the different modes uh, thanks to all the cool engineering that Plex put into this. Now, while I do love this toy, it's not perfect. Um, the proportions are weird, the arms are a bit big, uh, the dinosaurs, a lot of the time in the show, like uh, Boompaki over there, they are a lot smaller when they become an arm for one of the mechas. So the proportions are off because of that. Also, you have these holes right here on either side of Gabtira. In the show, those are not there. It's all one solid piece of uh, chest. So, it's not a perfect combination, but nonetheless, it's a fun transforming toy. And so here is a look at the Bakuretsu Kyoryujin from the back. Looks okay, nothing to write home about. The front looks a lot more spectacular. Let's talk about the articulation a bit. You can move the arms up on both sides. You can do the same with the other arm. As for the legs, there's not much movement for either the Plezuo or for the Bakuretsu Kyoryujin. The Bakuretsu Kyoryujin can open up its legs a bit because of the fact that Gabtira's legs can spread out a bit. But there is also one other thing that's pretty cool. You can actually rotate the head a full 360 degrees. You know, in case some enemies decide to attack from the right side, he can actually look in that direction. And so now that we've talked about the transformations and all that other good stuff, we can talk a little bit about the electronics and the battery. So being part of the Juden Sentai Kyo Ryuja line, Plezuo comes with his very own battery, and that's pretty much standard for all these toys. On the back, we have the name of the mecha, Plezuon. On the front, we have a panel, and right up here we have a button that we can press to rotate the panel inside the battery. And so this is dormant mode, the Brave Bin mode, you know, ready to use, ready to activate the mecha. In dormant mode, the neat thing about these batteries is that they can store some light energy because of the fact that the sticker inside the panel is glow in the dark. Now like Gabtira and Terra Gordon, this mecha has its own set of electronics, so you don't have to rely on Gabtira to read the battery. And uh, the electronics are stored in the headpiece. Let's pop it off so we can get a better look. You can see at the top we have two buttons, and then on the underside we have the on-off switch. And it is now on. Now the toy will produce different sounds when you press the buttons on top, depending on whether or not the battery right here is inserted into the mecha. So let's check out the sounds that you get without the battery inserted first. When you press the triangle, you get a roar. When you hold the triangle, you get that attack sound. And as for the back, the kind of square button, you get that laser sound effect. Now that button doesn't make a different sound effect if you hold it down. You just get a whole bunch of laser sound effects in a row. Now the electronics for Plezuon are not as sophisticated as Gabtira's, meaning that it does not have a battery reader. You can see on the back there's that little uh, button kind of thing, and that's spring-loaded, and that's basically what is going to react to the battery. There's a little hole right here in the chamber, so that when you put the battery in, it'll fill that hole in the chamber, and when it goes back into the chamber and presses that button, 
it'll recognize that there is a battery inside of the chamber and that's when you get the sound effect for the battery being inserted. But, like I said, this is not a, a smart reader like the one that's inside of Gobtira. So, whatever battery is inserted into this uh, mecha, it'll make the same sound effect. And so let's stick the battery in. You open up the mouth, put the battery into the chamber, and it makes that popping sound when it's secure. Close the mouth, and then you release the back of the chamber by pressing the button right there, the trigger. And that's the sound effect that you get when you insert the battery. And now that the battery is inserted, we get different sound effects when we press the buttons. Let's start off with the triangle. You get that catchy, upbeat music for the plezuo, and then holding the triangle. You get a combination of the music for the Kyoryujin and the Plezuo, which is the music for the Bakuretsu Kyoryujin. And then in the back... You get that catchy drum music. And uh, that keeps playing unless you do what you're supposed to, which is this. And there you have it, the attack sounds for the gun. So there you have it, a very cool toy with some cool transformations. You got some good sound effects. Uh, you have the sliding chamber gimmick for the battery. So very, very cool. Um, I actually like the design of the mecha more now that I've played with the toy than when I did when I just watched the show. Uh, very neat. Uh, really, this kind of shows that Plex still remembers how to make good toys and design good toys. Uh, they've been making a lot of strong designs and very, very cool toys in the Super Sentai line, which is why uh, people love the Japanese versions of these toys. Uh, but some people have stated that the last couple years haven't been that great with uh, the Kyoryuja line and also with Go Busters. So this is definitely a cool toy that uh, really harkens back to the cool designs that Plex has done in the past. I really wish that some of the other mechas in the line would have been as cool as our friend Plezuo and also Gordon. It would have made this line so much stronger. But, I mean, at this point, it is what it is. Um, we, we got what we got and the um, line's been so-so. But luckily, the Plezuo has been one of the better mechas in the line. So, this has been Sentai Seiya with another Collection DX review. Thanks for joining me. We're going to attach them right here. You have to open up these little connection points inside of the arms. And this one goes on the left side because the purple side has to stick forward. And then you lose your toy.